Uh, that's a um, little LAE um, digital thermostat and defrost controller. Um, that's another one made by, um, that's an Elliwell. It's got a whole Sailor's Own brand label on it, but um, it's an Elliwell. Yeah. They're quite a common little um, uh, control on bottle coolers, small fridges, cold rooms, lots of refrigeration applications. Um, you, even you could set them up to run air conditioning if you wanted. Um, some have two probe inputs, this has got two. Some only have one, depends what they're um, doing. Second probe is usually in the evaporator to tell if it's iced up so it knows when to start and stop a defrost or even start the fan up if it only brings the fan on once the um, evaporator is cold again. Um, but what they do um, or have is uh, different types of probes like this one could have NTC or PTC that's default to NTC probes which is negative temperature coefficient which means the resistance goes up, the temperature goes down. With the positive one, if the resistance goes up, the temperature goes up. So uh, if you put the wrong probe on there, if it did work, the temperature would go the wrong way. It would say it was getting colder when it was getting warmer. Um, but there's loads of different sorts of probes, and this is catalog here. These are all PTC ones. Um, then we've got some NTC ones. And then we've got PT100s, and they do an NT100 um, as well, which is the same idea with NTC and PTC, but there's a different resistance, um, and there's way more than this. <coughs> so it's sometimes tricky to work out whether what sort of probe you should have, especially if it's, there's no markings on it or it's not one you recognise. So what I thought it would be handy to be able to do is know what resistance you should have at a set temperature. So this is reading 20 degrees at the moment. Um, I've got one probe wired in, which is the evaporator probe. Um, so it doesn't bring up a fault code. It will come up with an E2 fault if there's no probe connected. But on the air temp probe, I've got this um, decade box, um, which is just basically um, four banks of resistors with switches to switch them in and out of circuit and um, a couple of outputs and I've got them clipped onto the uh, probe connections and it's set at, um, that's 10k, 12k, 400 and that says 12.5k and that is now reading 20 degrees um, this this is a sort of typical probe. <coughs> um, we measure the resistance on that. Let's see if we can get this set up so it's easy to read. There we go. Have to, uh, we should be able to actually. We've got a little prop there, haven't we? We should be able to do it like that. So if you turn in the monitor on its side. <clears throat> there you go, that's saying 10 point, it's in kilo ohms. Um, so it's saying 10.6. So actually we could set this at 10.6. Uh, 10, 100, no, 10, 2, 4, yeah, 6 and 10.6. Um, so according to that, it is 24 degrees in there. Just going off of that. I had one the other day, I had a display that was reading 2.0. Six, I think it was, and I put a new probe on there. It was fine, and then I installed the probe, and it was still reading 2.6. Uh, 
and it didn't move. And then I wondered whether it was the um, display that was faulty. Um, if I'd had this little box on there, I could have flicked some switches up and down and um, seen the temperature change and then I would have known that that was reacting to a change in... Oh, it's just turned off now, you had a little relay click. Um, that was reacting to a change in temperature or change in input rather and the fault would have been with the probe. Um, so I mean there's lots of Lots of things use these little probes, they're all different designs. Some have metal ends, some are plastic. Uh, that's an NTC probe. Like that. This is um, an Elliwell probe, but um, they're pretty similar. That's reading 10.49 uh, kilo ohms, and I'm warming it in my hand. So as it's warming up, you can see the uh, resistance is dropping. which was making an NTC probe and it's, it's come out of a bag with NTC written on it. So we'll try another one. Well that one's reading 967 ohms and it's the same type of design. Uh, the cables are different colour but that's that's nothing to do with it, that's a PVC and the other one was silicon, so the other one was more waterproof. Um, right, so I'm holding it in my hand again. And as it's warming up, the resistance is going up. So that's a PTC probe. Yeah, it's got another um, probe on there, that's a sort of a milk tank. Slightly faulty, but you can see that's reading 28 kilo ohms, which is way over what the other two were reading. So again, that's an even different style of probe. Um, one of the things, when you get a uh, one of these displays reading the wrong temperatures, you never know whether it's the probe that's gone out, I mean that's most likely, or whether it's the, the controller itself. But um, again, if you knew that... that say 20 kilo ohms, it should read a set temperature. You could put this little box on there, set it to 20, 20 kilo ohms, and if the temperature was different, you would then maybe think the problem might lie in the controller rather than the um, probes. And I guess if you've got a uh, compressor with a um, thermistor module on there and you suspect that's playing up, you can um, set the uh, little switches on here to the trip and reset resistances and see if the thermistor module does what it should do. So that would be um, another useful uh, thing for it. Um, and on mini splits you know you can have problems where they won't go into heating because the coil temp sensor is, is saying the indoor coil hasn't warmed up um, and you could substitute that for for this and see, you know, if it's, you should be able to find out from the technical department what um, temperature and resistance it should switch on at, um, and then you'll know whether you're looking at a, a thermistor or maybe a circuit board problem. So I think that, you know, the, you can come up with a lot of uses for it. 
Um, I think it was about £62, so it's not a really a great deal of money. Um, I think the leads were about £3 each, these little test leads, with the clips on the end. So, uh, again, I don't think it's going to be something you're going to use every day. You know, you might be lucky if you use it once a month, but um, when you do, I think it's going to be a handy little thing to have to make the job easier. Even get something going again, you know, if you um, had a sensor that wasn't critical but kept something from running, you could link this on there and set it to, you know, like an average reading and leave it until you got the probe, proper uh, probe for it or something. You know, the more complicated things are, they, they can lock out because they think it won't run because it thinks the outdoor ambient's too cold or something stupid like that. And um, a data centre or somewhere like that, it's quite critical to get something running again. Uh, let me just show you what happens when they, uh, the probe went open circuit. There we go. It should... Uh, Minus 50, there we go, E1, probe fault. So if you ever see one of these with an E fault on the E1 fault, and possibly I think E2 would probably be the evaporator probe. Um, okay, this is in the fault codes in the instructions. Oh, I've been on a lot of spending spree lately, and that was my other little cheap gadget I got, it was a couple of pounds. It's a fuse puller, but more for the um, little round fuses. It's quite often you try and pull them out of the pliers, and you crush, you know, the glass ones, you crush them, so you should be able to hook that on and pull them out. 